Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. Hello, lovely people. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, 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 welcome. What a pleasure. Hello, Kathy. What a great pleasure. Hello, Mark. Dr. Farrington himself. What a pleasure. Hello, Anne. Great to have you guys here. Great to have you here. Grace, Tracy, Drew. Lots of familiar names. Ida, Anne. My goodness. Tell you what, I almost, I almost was never here. Funny story. Not that funny today. I was like talking a bit of smack before we get to business. I uh, was busy eating coffee, drinking coffee, about to have a rusk, taking it easy. As you can see, I'm still in my, most of my gym clothes because um, I thought I had time and all my computers and stuff were, were here at the office and uh, I thought, let me have a rusk and a coffee and then I'll shower and get changed. Realizing that I've actually locked my keys in the office, which means getting in here is rather difficult. So I ended up having to race around to get another pair of keys from Lara, finally get into the office uh, um, pretty much a few minutes ago. So anyway, I'm here. We're here. We're going to talk about something really exciting. This is actually a subject that's quite hard to talk about. So I'm not going to lie to you. It's, uh, it's, it's something that can be discussed. Hmm. Terje, I'm not sure. I think it might be doing it every time a Zoom, uh, Zoom updates itself, it might do it. I also got one of those the other day. I don't think it's anything to worry about. Um, if it's, if it's pointing for a name and you're not a robot, I think it's just an up, update. Obviously there's, there's, there's been some Zoom hacks, people getting onto meetings that are not invited onto it. Cause it's obviously quite easy. If I send you the link, the link is, you know, people used to put their link on Instagram and obviously anyone with a sixth sense of humor, can jump onto a meeting they're not supposed to and do all kinds of things. So I think they're, they're, they're working on their security stuff. So every time it updates, you might get something like that. Yeah. I hope that answers your question, Sergey. Just wait. I like to wait. There's some latecomers sometimes coming. Um, I'll tell you another funny story. I was, uh, I, was, uh, I was in the bush some time ago and I met this, I met this old man. He must have been at least 100 years old. And uh, I thought, you know, let me, let me get some wisdom. So I said to him, hey, gentlemen, you know, tell me about life. And he said, well, we don't have enough time for that, but I'll tell you a story. And I, and I said, great. Tell him, you know, I'd love it. I'd love to hear a story. So he said, okay, and I'll tell you a story. There was a forest. And, uh, and in this forest, there was an elephant and there was a mouse. And they were great pals. And they used to walk with each other in the afternoons, talking about life. And then, um, well, okay. And uh, he said, one day, the elephant fell into a hole created by man to trap him. And I thought, that's terrible. And he said, oh, so what happened? And he said, no, no, no. So the mouse had a plan. He said, hang on, before the humans come back, let's, I've got a plan, stay there. So the mouse ran off to his home and he got a rope. Now, obviously, a mouse being a mouse doesn't have the power to pull an elephant out there out the hole. So he needed help. So he went and he found the jaguar. He was sleeping on his tree, fast asleep, fat, full of, uh, we can call it capybara because there's no jaguars here to eat in the parlor. But then again, the elephant, anyway, let's just say the story was as it was. And the uh, jaguar full of capybara said, okay, I'll come, I'll come help. Let's go get him up. We can't have him sitting in that hole. When the humans come back, they kill him. So they ran off jaguar and mouse, tied rope around, this trapped elephant um, and they heaved and they pulled and they heaved and they pulled and they heaved and they pulled and they pulled the elephant out the hole. And I thought, that, well, that's fantastic. He says, no, but the story's not over. He says, um, they were walking in the forest sometime much later on um, as an older mouse and an older elephant. And this time the mouse fell into a similar hole, trap caused by humans to, to capture and, and eat them. Uh, rodents actually taste fantastic. Don't ask how I know that. Um, and uh, anyway, now they had a big problem. The mouse was in the hole and the humans were, were inbound to kill him. So they, they thought about pulling him out, but the elephant didn't know where, neither where the house was, where the rope was. He didn't even know where the jaguar was. Jaguar had gone, was on vacation, hadn't seen him for weeks. 
So, and they had to act quickly. Humans were on. So, elephant thought in his mind, elephants are very, very wise animals. He thought, I've actually I've got a plan. Mouse, stand back against the sides of the hole. And the elephant walked over the hole and spread his legs. And elephants are very well endowed. So, he let his penis out all the way down to the floor of the hole. And the mouse grabbed on and climbed up the elephant's penis and elephant walked out of the out of the hole and i thought that's a fantastic story i said well what's what's the point you know what's the moral and the old man looked at me and said if you have a big penis you don't need a jaguar i hope lots of you are laughing behind the camera really. i thought it was a really funny joke um anyway that took five minutes <laughs> <laughs> no, Ada, you are right. Jonty is the store storytelling master. Um, just as a disclaimer, I'm a big fan of Jaguar, honestly. And I think Jonty's actually on this webinar coming to to chat. Um, I love Jaguars. Jaguars are e, e type, most beautiful car ever made. So let's get on to business. <laughs> Mark. <laughs> Uh, oh, thank you, Terje. Yeah, send it through. Send it through. Send it through. I'll tell you, I'll teach you how to jade out if it's ever a problem. I'm a, I'm a pro at jading them out. Um, <laughs> okay, guys, let's talk about something uh, actually um, relevant. And we're going to talk about just a picture syndrome, for lack of a better term for it. We. I and we, I've heard some other people name it, it's, it's almost like a, a, a sickness, hence the word syndrome, something we all get kind of trapped in sometimes. How to, how to branch away from just taking a picture to creating something that's visually appealing. Now, we've got to differentiate between two because quite often some say, no, you know, creating art is by manipulating and removing and doing lots of changes to a scene and making it unnatural. However, art, that's not the description. Art is simply the expression and application of human creative skill into something. So, and it's, it's, it's predominantly and primarily enjoyed because of its beauty and its emotional power. You don't necessarily have to be a Photoshop expert. In fact, not, not necessarily, you don't at all have to be a Photoshop expert and remove stuff and create all kinds of crazy things, which I sometimes do. But you don't need to do that to create art. Art it doesn't have to be a painting. It's something that is primarily enjoyed because of beauty or its emotional power. So you can do that with completely natural skill, uh, natural scene through just your camera, no editing, um, just with careful considerations of how you approach certain scenes. Um, and, and another thing is, is, is quite often on the other side of that, when people regard what they think art is, art shouldn't necessarily um, it should own its own reality, put it that way. It should own its own reality. It doesn't have to mimic exactly what's in front of it. Um, so this is the definition of, of, not really a definition, of, it kind of is a definition of art. In order to, to, to understand what we're talking about here, to move away from just taking a picture, a lot of us on this thing, I doubt, want to just take a picture. We want to take something that's visually appealing, that's beautiful, that has emotional power. It's a difficult thing to achieve. Um, when you're looking at a very scene. So this, this, this um, webinar is going to be about trying to differentiate. I'm going to give you three skills, three, not skills, three um, guidelines on how to approach a scene so that it doesn't end up as just a picture. Three things that sometimes if ignored, becomes just a picture. It just becomes a picture of a leopard. Um, so we're going to look at those three things. It's actually four things. It's actually four things. One of them is more of a statement, not a guideline. So it's just something to, to get a bit of food for thought next time you are tackling the next scene, which hopefully is quite soon. Hopefully we're all in the bush quite soon. I'm personally missing it a lot. So let's get right into it. The first thing I'm going to talk about is one of the most feared concepts in, I'm going to share my screen with you. We're going to go to screen share. Feel free to uh, chat to me still. I'm here. I've got your chats. Give me a short moment of time to just arrange my workspace. There we go. So I'm not going to start on this image. We're going to go to library and we're going to start on a 
couple of images that I've actually starred that we can talk about in terms of avoiding just a picture. One of the most common things I see in, 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 in becoming in, in images, great images, images that have potential to, to be a great image, to have a great story, is the fear of the loss of detail. So now all of us are, are have various types of equipment and sometimes we still can't get close enough. What I mean by that is you take a picture and I've actually, I've, uh, I've imported some pictures of Google, excuse me, because I actually delete a lot of photographs and if it's just a picture, it gets deleted. So with all due respect, I hope no one on this webinar, these pictures um, are owned by any of you. I actually just quickly got them off Google just as an example. And if they are, I mean this in the deepest respect. We're all here to learn and um, apologize in advance. So uh, we're going to look at, at, at the, 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 the fear of the loss of detail and what it does to um, preventing you from taking something artistic, something that's beautiful to look at. Now, I'm going to start with one that's, that's, that could be quite controversial now. To me, this is just a picture. It's a beautiful line in the wild. You very seldom see lines with manes like this. Um, so, but there's a few things that are, are, are contributing to, to, to being just a picture. Now, just a picture, no emotional power, art, emotional power, pleasing to look at. There's a few things that, that contribute to that. And one of them is, is this, this loss of detail where people go, now I can't crop in. And at this loss of detail, I'm talking about primarily in the editing process. And I see it a lot, no, 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 I can't crop in, I can't crop in, lose detail, lose detail, lose detail. One thing I want people to consider when they, when they worry about losing detail, obviously it is something worth keeping in your mind, is some of the most beautiful pieces of art, art, real art, were painted, were painted sometimes very loosely on oil paint, with oil paint paint brushes over canvas paper, and there's not a lot of detail in there. What mattered in that painting was obviously the effort, the painter himself, but the story, the composition, that's what really mattered. That's what brought it all together. There wasn't a huge amounts of detail. I and mean, we couldn't, in those paintings, you couldn't see every little eyelash along the, the lion's face. So there was um, importance in the composition, in the perspective of the scene. The detail was not that important. And if we apply that to our editing process, we can save a lot of images that are just pictures and get dragged and dropped into the dustbin in the corner down there and actually create something beautiful out of it. So for example, in this picture, now just as a disclaimer, I'm going to delete all of these. I assure you I do not need to steal people's photographs. I just needed to find some images that um, I could, I could um, edit a little bit and show you what I mean. Okay. The problem about this now, almost all of us on this webinar who have been on Safari before, have this problem. You're shooting off a Jeep. Jeeps are high. Safari, via, safari vehicle, Gambia, whatever you want to call it, they're high. As a photographer, as an artist, as a creator of art, you should never metaphorically be inside the frame, have hold significance inside the frame. It is up to your subject. As soon as you, as the, as the creator, are not inside the frame, and what I mean by that is taking significance, taking importance in the picture, you take away from the exact thing that you're trying to de depict and you take importance away from it. So when you're looking down on a Jeep, at an animal, you're above it and you're looking down on it, it takes away its significance through various things. One, you're looking down on it and immediately you're looking down on the animal so that exact feeling is, 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 is created in the, in the viewer. But two, because of the angle, you get a very um, shallow and, and um, kind of depthless image, which means your background, because your line's here and you're looking down like this, the background's directly behind the line and the foreground's directly. So there's no depth, there's no blur, there's no, nothing drawing you to the line. It's a very flat image. So you've almost given the viewer significance. This is one of the first ways and most common ways of uh, making something just a picture. You see them all over Instagram. It's just a square shot like this with a subject. It's looking down, you've got them so close with the Jeep that um, you've got a downward angle on your subject. I mean, if you're on a helicopter or drone and you're very high up and you're getting big scenes, shooting down on your subject is brilliant, but it's capturing something much bigger. When you're personal, when you're involved with your subject, it makes a huge difference. Um, so sometimes, and you often see when you're in a sighting, especially in East Africa, in fact, in, in all of Africa, 
and you ever see, you can spot the photographers from a mile away because they're always parked, well, not always, they should be parked further away than the people with cell phones just trying to get picture, 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 picture. So instead of just a picture here and worrying about, oh no, but you know, this was zoomed in all the way of my camera and I couldn't get in closer and I've ended up with just a picture, you actually have the potential, this might not be the greatest version to do it, to further create a piece of art, even out of these pictures that we are right up close to the animal, and I'll show you some more examples now, right up close to the animal, and we can't um, get rid of this horrible perspective when you're looking down on your subject. It's terrible, it's a destroyer of, of good things. Um, you can go in and you can crop away, and I'm gonna get them to, this is gonna bleed into another very important rule, which is minimalism. And now, I know that most people are thinking quickly now, minimalism, small subject, big scene, clean scene, it's not that simple, and I'll get into that just now. And it's a really good thing to know. So, there's not a lot of detail on this subject at all, okay? Because this is off Google's a two megapixel picture. But you can now get closer, get more involved in your subject through a simple crop. You lose detail, yes, but the composition is solid. Not a very good example. Let me see if I can find some more. This, no, not a very good example. Again, these ones, looking down on the Jeep, it's just a picture. You've got a high angle on your subject, although it's interesting, two lines. These uh, have captive line written all over them, especially that female. She's a rather, rather large girl. Okay, so what do we do? We sacrifice detail for composition, okay? Putting that point on there, putting that point in there, filling the frame. The problem with just a picture, the problem with this, this here, is your subject being almost portraiture doesn't own the frame. It's just lost in it. At the end of the day, your subject divides the space in your frame and must conform with it. A subject like this, which is close and it's considered portraiture, doesn't own the frame. So you need it to own the frame. You need it to belong, the frame to belong to your subject, not just subject belong to the frame, if that makes sense. So you need to come in closer. You need to bring your viewer to the subject in a more like in a way. This is going more portrait maybe. Fill the frame further. Now, you've lost detail, but it's a small price to pay compared to just having another picture of a lion. So I hope that's making sense. Um, we're going we're gonna to go into a few more. I've got a few examples of where cropping and losing detail is the way to go. And you can actually make um, some really good images out of it if, if you're willing to, to pay the small price. Because um, at the end of the day, a little bit of loss of detail, you can still have a great piece of art. Badly composed image, just a picture. It's as, it's as, it's as valuable as... Hmm. I don't know. Something that has very little value. Oh, poor, poor, poor metaphor choice there. Usually I can spit those out quite easy. Here's some good examples. Okay, have a look at this. So, beautiful frames of, of leopards, if I don't mind saying myself, okay? Framed by mother, framed by another cub, very close. If you go into this, there's not a huge amount of detail left over here. If this was me, those of you who know me by now, I'll J these pieces of grass out in the corner here, but we're not going to get into this. This, this, this tutorial is not about J, it's about different difference between art and just a picture and how to create that yourself in your own work. So if I look at the original image here, okay, it's much bigger scene. This was as close as pretty much as close as I can get as a 380 mils. I could have gotten in closer, but I remember my terms of 400 I had back then. And it almost for some reason lost incredible amounts of detail at 400 mils. And I was actually better off cropping. So you can be left with this. And yes, there is various other crops you can do in here to try and bring the viewer's attention onto that little cub's face. Lots of things you can try. That was terrible. Messing around. But as it stands here, again, your subject. Now, it's very easy to say that all three leopards are the subject. It's actually not. What's the subject, what owns the frame, is this guy who's got direct eye contact. He's snarling with the camera. You don't want him to divide attention between things that don't, don't necessarily want it. So I'm going to sacrifice detail. I'm going to sacrifice 
all the detail if I have to, and I'm going to make it a cleaner, more powerful image. My viewer is more connected with the subject, but we're going to get into that. That's actually another uh, headline, but I'm just showing you now how often you can sacrifice detail for great composition. Here's another example. It's actually it's the same group of references, Mala Mala. We're going to be chatting about Mala Mala at the end of the week. What is placed? Look at the, look at the, look at the first one. Okay. Um, again, lost in the frame, you are slightly, slightly drawn to the eye contact of this leopard over here, but not a lot. There's a, there's a famous painter called Frank Steller, and he once said, you see, it's a very simple quote, but it meant quite a lot with, 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 with Frank Steller. He was obviously a very famous painter. He said, you see what you see. Very simple. And what he meant by that was, your viewer is going to see what you see, what you want them to see at the end of the day. Perspective, there's two, there's two um, different branches of perspective, two ways of looking at perspective. One perspective is how we look at a scene, how we interpret it ourselves. That is bound to the individual, us entirely, you. There's no one else in this world who has an identical perspective to you throughout life. That's bound to you. And then there's another perspective. This is how we align elements of a scene to manipulate the perspective of the viewer, to have a little bit of power over the perspective of the viewer, show them what I want them to see. Um, so, sorry, quote is what you see is what you see, not see what you see. What you see is what you see is, is Frank Stiller's um, quote. So in order to make my clients see, to connect, not my clients, my viewer, um, with this baby leopard, leopard cub, bad terminology, I'm going to sacrifice detail for story. This is, just, this is just a picture of a leopard and it's some two cubs, honestly, nothing more. If this rock wasn't here, there's a bit more depth. This grass wasn't here, it was a bit cleaner. We could argue a better composition, but it is all there. So we have to sacrifice a little bit of detail to make it more confronting. And now we know what to look at. The baby, this baby leopard. Again, I'll J out a lot of this grass, clean it up um, in time, uh, but uh, we're not going to do it in this episode. So there's, there's the importance of choosing sharpness over composition to avoid just a picture. And we don't want just a picture. As as photographers, I know all of you, a lot of names up in here. I've seen your work. Um, you have beautiful images. You want to avoid taking just a picture. So we're going to get on to some more things. I just don't want to leave anything out. This is going to take up the rest of the webinar. Now, I like I warned in the beginning of the, the movie is um, this is something we can literally talk about for days. We can all come here to the Wild Eye. I'm in the conference room now, and we can chat about what makes a photograph appealing forever. And you might even not even reach any conclusions because our perspectives are all different. But these are three guidelines I personally have used to avoid taking just a picture, just being another leopard picture. Um, and the first one we're gonna get to is minimalism. Now, I know a lot of you under understand, um, or, or when you think of minimalism, you think of small subject, big open space, such as, I think I put uh, some examples here. Uh, some such as this. So now this typically is what people will, will, will think minimalism means, kind of small subject and big wide open scenes. But what re minimalism really means, and if we can grasp what minimalism really means, and, a, and, a, and you should apply a minimalistic approach to certain degrees, to every, almost every photograph you can take. Off the top of my head, I can't think of one that I wouldn't apply it but you should try to apply its principles, its actual principles to every photograph that you take. Um, so what it means is that if you expose the essence of an animal, the essence of a scene or the essence of an animal without any other objects, factors um, that might be distracting or unnecessary. Okay, so it doesn't necessarily mean um, it doesn't necessarily mean that the subject needs to be on its own in a 
big scene like this in a very small subject, because this is normally what we, we, what we call minimalism. Okay? It actually just means that the essence of the subject must be captured without anything, any non-essential elements that are, are the, that are distracting. And quite honestly, pretty much all photographs should be taken with that in mind. If there's stuff that's distracting, it would rather not have it. Now, in wildlife photography, we don't often have choice. Sometimes it's in a bush. You know, I'll show you some more. Uh, just a picture, just a picture, just a picture. I wish these had come out in more detail. I do apologize for that, but I, I am a deleter of, of all just the pictures. Beautiful big elephant bull, green ash box, so it's very pixelated, but for the sake of this, it actually doesn't matter. Beautiful elephant bull, magnificent. This whole scene is, 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 is confined to meagerness because the essence of the animal is fighting with non-essential elements. There's bushes, these trees, all kinds of things. So it's reduced, this whole image is reduced to a meager emotional impact, um, which an elephant bull like this really shouldn't have. Um, so let me go back to the thing. So that is one of the first rules of, of separating just a picture to a work of art is minimalism and having a minimalistic approach. If we look at it, the essence of a subject without any non-essential elements that might be fighting for its attention. Apply that and look for that in the image. Do I need that? Do I need that? If those bushes, are they fight? Try and eliminate as much as you can those distractions and you're applying in a minimalistic approach. Technically, even though the subject is owning the entire frame here, a lot of this image can be described as a minimalistic approach because the essence of the, the leopard is very obvious and there's no elements that are non-essential. Everything is essential. Even the back of the leopard fills the frame and the entire frame is leopard. So even though it's not a small, small subject, it could be described as minimalism. If you, if you start to see how you can apply minimalism to every photograph, um, you can see how this is what's more standardly known as a minimalistic approach, small subject, big scene, but again, no non-essential elements that are distracting, no non-essential elements are distracting. Whereas in a, just a picture, there's often different um, uh, elements that, that distract you and fight for attention. So that's the first thing. And I'm not going to go into too many things. I'm going to do three most important ones. We covered that. Any questions on minimalism? I'm just going to make sure sometimes, sometimes, sorry, the chat doesn't come up. There you go. Yes, Ada, exactly. It doesn't. It, it doesn't tell any story. I think, I, I think, uh, I don't know when that came through my chats. I don't notice them coming through. Um, I'm not sure if I've answered that already, Ada. Let me know. Just send me the, send me the question again. If um, uh, you want it, you want me to go through it again? Got all the time in the world. No worries. So applying minimalism to a picture, it's one way of, 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 of avoiding. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Ada. Absolutely. It is, it, is, um, it is a fact, indeed. So telling a story is, is truly what, what can separate a picture from a piece of art. So the second thing is probably more of the most common excuse when it comes to taking just a picture and a piece of art. And I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this, 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 this um, this obsession with going in close. We have big lenses, we have big um, sensors, we can always crop in, we can go closer and closer and closer and closer. And, you know, people resort to head and shoulder shots all the time. Now, head and shoulder shots sometimes are going to be your best option. Like that picture I showed you uh, in the beginning, although it's a head and shoulder shot, it's better than withdrawing and having a very flat scene. At least the head and shoulder shot, you are confronted with um, your subject. But too often these days, even in this beautiful big scene where there's beautiful framing and there's beautiful clouds and a beautiful, much bigger story, people going close, they cut that out because it's the safe way. But however, in saying that, quite often, um, sometimes people don't go in close enough whether it's a crop or, or driving closer with a Jeep. And this is where confronta confrontation or engagement with your subject comes in. Now, you can be engaged with your subject, but still not full frame with it. What I mean by this is, um, Whew. Let's, let's, let's look at a few things. Okay, the easy picture 
to, to talk about is a full frame picture of a lion that's looking straight down the lens. Okay, this makes it very easy. Confrontation. He's confronting your viewer, he's looking straight down the barrel. Okay, I actually think that's the original image. I couldn't get quite close enough to fill the frame. So by um, cropping in, I oh geez, um, I, I created confrontation. Confrontation. Number 50, if I'm right. Absolutely. I can definitely, I can definitely add it. I think, um, is it the one you're talking about is, where is it somewhere here? This one, not, is it this one? No. Oh, I think I know which one you're talking to speak of. I don't know which one you speak of. It's from the decoy. Uh, on the left, I think this is the left. Where is that thing? Is it? Oh my word! Where is it? There, this one. That one. Keep on. Not sure if I keep on. Keep on. That's the one. Okay. Beautiful. Well, that's actually something that I'm actually planning on chatting about now. So we're going to have um, we're going to have a good old chat with uh, with with regards to these these elephants' perspective. We're going to get into perspective. That's going to be the third. That's going to be the third thing we get into: minimalism, confrontation, and engagement as one and perspective. Very very important things to engage. Another thing with 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 confrontation engagement again, staying too far back. You're left with, um, oh, sorry, that's the tiff. Too far back, you're left, and this is as close as I could get. Um, you're left with quite a meager scene, a very busy scene. You want to create engagement between the viewer and the subject. This might mean losing detail. It might be moving your position. If you're doing landscapes or people, getting into a different position where the subject confronts in a good way, sometimes in an aggressive way, it doesn't really matter. Um, but engages with the viewer. One of the most common, common mistakes is people withdraw. They're too scared to go in close. Now, when I'm talking, sometimes you might find contradictions. That's why nothing's a set rule. I'm just talking about what's a common mistake. And sometimes common mistake is not going in close enough and not engaging with your subject. And by engaging, I don't mean get off the Jeep and provoke a lion charge. Okay. That happens sometimes. Not ethical, rather not. And you might get eaten, so don't do that. What I mean is just cancelling out. Some of these things work in hand. Minimalism, engagement work hand in hand. Is taking out things that distract you and engaging your viewer with your subject through cropping in, through another uh, picture over here is a good example of, of how you can engage your viewer. Direct eye contact, you can see here, direct eye contact with the lioness, although I'm quite far back. There's a lot of other stuff going on in the scene and not engaging fully. So I can crop in and maybe even a nice long crop like this. You want to print it on the wall. Obviously, Instagram is um, not going to like this crop. But if you're cropping all your pictures now for Instagram, this webinar is not for you. And probably any webinar is not for you. Although it's, it's important. Social media is important. And that crop is important. Your instincts should be to crop it exactly how it should be cropped. When it comes to composition, the most forgotten thing is format. Format is part of composition. Without a good format, format is the shape of the image. For example, your, your camera takes a picture in two by three format. Most of the time, you can change it. Um, Jerjay, good, 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 good question. In fact, I think my original image where I cropped this was actually a square. Jerjay is, is um, suggesting a square format. Um, so, Something like that. Very good. Very good suggestion. JJ, you can see the foot over here. This lioness, the cub, is very much owning the frame. I have sacrificed a little bit of detail, but now I'm confronted. I'm engaged with my subject. It's too important. It's not just a picture anymore. Now there's emotional impact. There's, there's strong emotional impact. Um, rule of thirds. Good work. Um, 
I'm not sure how you're suggesting apply the rule of thirds. Um, are you talking about the format, Terje? Is it really there? Yeah. There we go. So it worked really well. Square format worked really, really well. Square formats often are quite good at bringing balance to a frame and centering your subject, centering it, and, and, and are actually really good for um, confronting and engaging images. So that works really, really well for that kind of thing. See if there's any other good examples. This is quite a controversial one. It might even be worth uh, sending it out to the jury is there's a number of ways to, to crop this. Um, and there's an extreme version, which is this very confrontational. This is right in your face, looking straight down the barrel, looking straight down the barrel. Again, I sacrifice detail, but that confrontation is what I want to want my viewer to be engaged. However, I could spread this open a little bit more and allow for a number of different compositions. One is like this, a little bit more space, gives the image a little bit more depth, a little bit more room for the viewer to wonder the image, giving it more of a story. Remember, creating a story is sometimes truly, truly difficult, um, especially with portraiture. So, you know, technically a story should have a beginning and an end, should travel through a story. Um, sometimes a full portrait of, a, of an animal or a, or, or a subject can simply be a strong statement. As long as that statement engages with your um, uh, subject um, strongly, it can still work. This line is, this is a good suggestion, Lisa. Portrait, full body. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. I love it. Good suggestion. Number of ways you can do it. None of them wrong. None of them wrong. Well, actually, there is wrong ways, but the ones that you suggest so far are not wrong. All of them really good. Um, portrait really, really works. Remember, with portraits, good guideline is keep the eyes above the third line, this, this line up here. Um, keep it above there, unless there's eyes looking up, need space to look into. But if the eyes are looking at you or down, you want to keep it on this line or just above it in this space here. So it actually works really well. Good, good, um, good suggestion, Lisa. So I hope you're getting to a grasp of, of confrontation and engagement, how important it is to, to, to try and engage with your subject. There's, a, there's a, a number of different ways. I mean, this is a, you can see I've taken it very skew as we've <laughs> taken it off the back of my shoulder. I love these. How do you get so far down? How do I get so far down in terms of um, which image? This image, TJ? Tejay's question is, how did I get so far down? As in my angle or why did I get so far down? As in the crop? Sorry, Tejay, I'm a little, little confused. A little confused. Um, Oh no, with, this, with the line, just lucky because she was in the riverbed and she was walking a little bit higher, higher above us. So um, sometimes you're lucky. If, if a line or your subject can be elevated and you can get eye level, you are, you're winning, you're winning. If I'd gotten off the Jeep with her and that cub in her mouth, I'd probably be replace that cub and be in her mouth myself. So um, I'd be in pretty big trouble. Yeah, she was a, and you know what, these moments are rare. I must say, I, I worked in, you could probably say the predator capital of the world, natural, naturally occurring um, place, Mala Mala Game Reserve for a few years. And even at Mala Mala, I only saw this about five or six times. And this particular scene was the first time I'd seen a, a lion carry its cub. After that, it got a little bit easier because this pride all gave birth at the same time, 13 cubs all over the river, they never left. So we actually ended up seeing them carry quite a lot, but to see them carry, they almost it's seldomly carry straight at you. To see them look straight at you, we come in my very rare. So I was very fortunate to have witnessed it. Um, but uh, um, I, an, an interesting subject, we can talk about this too. If we look at how I shot this picture, you can see I actually zoomed in. Now, 
I zoomed in really close, which meant I lost, I lost a little bit of detail. But you can see in the corners here, there's a lot of cubs around her. And if I had zoomed up back, there's, when, you, when you're deciding whether to go in close or go in far, this is a, a kind of broad rule that I sometimes give myself, not a rule guideline, I never seldom like saying rules, is when to go in close, when to come in far. When there are small details that need a lot of significance in an image, probably best to go in close. When there are big details, clouds, trees that frame the subject, something like that, it's probably better to stay far back. There's a very important detail here that's very small. It's the cub, it's this moment that's important. That moment there. Um, I do carry two cameras, Terje, if I can. Uh, D850 and a D750. Um, it's, it's, it's good to carry two cameras. It's not essential. I carried one camera for a long time and uh, it's fine, but dust does get into uh, lens connections and can cause a little bit of problems when you're interchanging lenses. And obviously interchanging lens lenses um, can, uh, can waste time as well. Moments like this, this is a few seconds. Not even, not even. When she's looking at you and she's got the cup at you, you can see there's another one here, which is a similar image. But if you look at her eyes, okay, she's actually looking just over my left shoulder. And that tiny little difference can make a huge difference to confrontation and engagement. You can't control that with your subject, but um, you've got to be ready for the moments that she looks straight at you. So confrontation and engagement. Second, second guideline um, on top of minimalism uh, is going close, engage closer if you need to, if you can, if that's necessary, to engage your viewer with your subject and not leave them lost in the frame if they didn't, don't need to be, or wondering where the significance is. So um, last thing we're going to get into is perspective. I've mentioned it again. Now, again, I've mentioned them. Um, yes, JJ, absolutely. Having, having the ability to zoom differently is, is really useful. Now, I love a prime lens. I absolutely adore prime lens. The quality is magnificent. But I have been held back by using primes when it comes to um, versatility. If I want to come back and I want to include more of a big story or if I want to close out um, non-essential elements and have a more confronting image, having a good quality zoom lens actually uh, is a great, a great help indeed. So uh, good point indeed. Now, the second one is perspective, okay? Perspective, like I said before, I'm gonna repeat it quickly again. There's two, two sides to perspective. One is our own perspective of a scene, bound to us, the individual. The other is how we manipulate it the 3D elements in the scene, it's almost similar to composition, they, they kind of work hand in hand, is the perspective you have on the scene, or where composition, with the slightly different to composition, perspective has a lot to do with your angle of, of how you take it. So I've mentioned it before, if you're too high on a Jeep like this, uh, these two lines, we're actually, we're on the riverbank now looking down on them, and you can see that in the image, you're actually looking down, although it's a beautiful moment, um, of two male lines coming together, which everyone loves, loves a good male line interaction. You're looking down on the scene, which means the perspective is working against you. It's taking significance away from this moment. Okay, so it's becoming just a picture of two lines interacting. Luckily, I mean, sometimes you're lucky and the action of a scene is so magnificent that you don't need to worry about confrontation, engagement, minimalism or perspective. It's just a magnificent scene. That picture I'm sure you've all seen of Leopard jumping up, grabbing yellow bull stalk out the sky. Probably never be taken again. So just the fact that it was in the frame, perfect, perfect, beautiful. But this is a troubling perspective because you're looking down on these two male lines. So there's a few things we can do to help improve the perspective so we can make um, it more of a work of art than just two, two lines. And this first option, is by both going in close. Same two male lines, okay? If I look at where this image started, angle is the same, I've chopped this one's tail um, in the moment, but by going in close, you've taken away that downward angle. Now you're 
engage with the subject a lot more. So by changing your perspective, your angle, your approach, you now help bring the viewer and make them closer to the, the subject and make a more artistic and more beautiful looking image. Losing a bit of detail again, I, I keep re referring back to detail. Don't be afraid to lose that detail. Composition is what matters. Um, uh, art is what matters. The story, the, uh, the perspective, the engagement, that's what matters. Detail, sometimes yes, it's an absolute disaster of pixels and it's not savable, but if it's still got plenty of detail on it, it's just a little bit softer, much more important having a strong story, a strong um, uh, statement than losing a bit of detail. The other way you can do it in post-processing is, is it takes a little bit more time, is trying to darken away, trying to make the perspective less visual, the downward, less obvious, the downward thing. Various methods of darkening the edges, lightening the lines' faces, putting in blur filters behind the lines, making the background much more blurry, making the foreground much more blurry with, with um, you can do it in, in Lightroom with these if you down the clarity and the texture all the way and you pull that into the foreground. You can blur the foreground and you can even blur the, the background and brush away what's on the line. Like that. And you've blurred backgrounds. So you've, 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 you're fighting against that bad perspective of looking down on your subject. So there's various ways of doing it. I mean, I'm not going to go too much into the edits of how to do it. Um, yeah, there's many ways you can do it in Photoshop. You guys have seen my tutorials on, some of you might have seen my tutorials on, on blurring backgrounds and, and giving your, your subject a little bit more visual mass. Uh, however, we're not going to go into that now um, because that is for an entire new um, uh, tutorial. So that's perspective. Another thing about perspective I must talk about is, 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 is using the right lens for if you're wanting to go wide, you want to capture the immensity of a scene to use the right lens. And often, you know, I'll show you a good example. Um, when, you when you use a, you know, for example, if you try and shoot a scene where, you know, the trees in the background, oh, why are you zooming in all the way to, um, let's go a little bit back. Okay, these trees, might have significance in your frame. If you were to shoot this with a uh, zoom lens, what zoom lenses do, and you want the depth, you want the vastness of a scene to be significant. What zoom lenses do is they compress distance. It brings in the background closer. It makes it look bigger than it actually is in real life. So you've got to uh, keep these things in mind when you're dealing with perspective is if you're wanting a big scene and you want the vastness of that scene to be evident, you're going to have to shoot it with a wider lens like I did with this is the fixed 20 mil. Not that it's a bad picture, but I'll show you the difference of shooting um, a, a wide scene with uh, zoom lens is, it's not, a, it's not a bad picture, but the effect is very different. You've got to bear that in mind. These backgrounds get brought closer, they get stacked up, they compress detail, I mean, compress distance. Doesn't matter in this photograph, but in other photographs, it can really make a, a, a big difference to what was going to be a, a big scene has now been compressed into meagerness because you used a zoom lens on what should have been a, a vast and dramatic scene. So um, I hope that makes sense, guys. We've covered pretty much everything there. Yeah. What makes it appealing? What separates it from just a picture to a piece of art? Three main points to remember. Minimalism. What is minimalism? Capturing the essence of an animal. Um, without having unnecessary elements, um, non-essential elements. Apply that to every image that you can. Confrontation and engagement. Be engaged with your subject rather than, than, than being left out of the scene. But on the same front, perspective, not being the, 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 the reason, the, the, the main event of an image because you're looking down on your subject or um, you, you're taking away significance of the subject of where simply where you stand. So there's three things you've got to think of every time you're taking an image. Minimalism, confrontation, perspective. Hope that makes sense. It's been great having you here. Any questions? Oh, yes. Let's go back to this.
There we go. This one, Tuesday, is this the one? Pleasure, Tracy. We're still here. Is this the one, Terje? This is a, a, like I said, shot on a 2470. I wanted, I didn't want to compress that distance. I wanted that very wide, immense feeling to an image. If I had shot this with a zoom lens, even if I was far back, these mountains in the background, distance would have compressed and you get a much more meager, um, smaller scene, which sometimes works really well. But for a scene like this, where you want big skies, you want an immense scene. If you have the choice to drop down to a wider lens, will really, really, really help you out in a big way and um, make a much more. Uh, on this one, I'm on. I'm in the jeep. They're actually standing on a damn wall. Very lucky. They're standing on a on a on a wall um, in the decoy, um, which 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 put them up right above us, which which allows for this this big perspective which um, helps a lot with creating a beautiful scene. Absolutely. Yeah, this, I mean, this is, a, is quite a, a, a big edit on it that I went. This is what I kind of do for, for prints. When I, when I shoot for print and I want to go black and white, this is what I do. I go this like pasty um, silvery effect, not really black and white, but more kind of silvery, moody, um, I'll do a webinar on, on, on how to create them. Or you can just buy Nick filters. That's the easy way of doing it these days. I don't, yes, Nick filter is a very good way of, of, of doing it. In fact, there's one, I think there's a, there's a filter, Nick filter called, I can't remember, it's near the bottom that makes it very similar to this, um, which is like dark and uh, silvery yellowy rather than pure black and white. Yeah, I told you, we're very, very lucky, very, very, very lucky. That dam in Medique, guys, Medique dates are coming in October. If you want to shoot elephant, you want big scenes, that dam is huge. This is literally my favorite image I've ever taken with an elephant. And don't ask me why, I just love it. I just love it because it's framed by dust. Its shadow has helped with that. I just love elephants and I love this image. I don't know why I put it here. Um, but a good place where, I don't know if, if any of you have been to the Serengeti, but you all have to in your life because it's almost impossible to not apply minimalism, especially minimalism, um, engagement and perspective because you have such clean scenes, just short grass, subjects running everywhere. It's an absolute artscape everywhere you look. All of this is, this is Serengeti, just beauty, just minimalism at its finest. Um, you know, even, you know, there, there can be more than one subject in a scene of significance but um, the Serengeti is really, 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 really good at this. And, uh, and you know, not every destination is like this. It just uh, offers clean images, I'm not boasting, just expressing what I mean by uh, minimalism. Even this is minimalism, even though the subject's really big, it is the essence of the subject without any non-essential elements. Um, I hope that makes sense, guys. Any questions? Good idea, Ada. I'll do that. I'll do a Nick Filters free webinar. I'll write it down in my book. My book of, book of deeds. I'll do that. Great question. Great question indeed. Righty. Any other questions, guys? It's been a pleasure. I hope that makes sense. Remember, minimalism, engagement, perspective, keys, to beauty. Will do, Mark, will do. It's a, it's a, it's a, um, no, unfortunately, Carla, you have to pay for Nick Filters now. Um, it's not a lot, it's worth it, uh, but you do have to pay, but I will do a, I will do a, a webinar on it for sure. Absolute pleasure, absolute pleasure. Oh, lots of stuff coming through. Can't respond um, quickly. <laughs> John T, the storyteller himself is with us. What a pleasure. Um, pleasure, Kyla. Pleasure, Carla. Pleasure, my daughter. 
Pleasure, Anne, Ida. Oh, Marie, good to have you here, Marie. Marie, we must chat. Exciting things happening in the future um, that I must update you with. Very exciting things. Carla, great to have you here. Melissa, great to have you here. Oh, Marie-Jay, Marie-Jay, Marie-Jay. I can never get that one right. I'm so sorry. Um, Bianca, pleasure, thank you. Lisa, thank you. Oh, no, Ida. Ida, you just, you just calm down over there. No Makuleki story tonight. Cheers, Druza. Cheers, Julia. We'll chat soon, Marie. Pleasure, Anne. Such a pleasure, always. Uh, make a critique session of submitted photos. That's a great idea. Great idea, Treasure. of great idea actually that'd be good excuse me Ida good night let me go good night before uh, Mr. Bozas starts revealing stuff you shouldn't good night everyone always good to have you here thanks for joining see you soon cheers 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 cheers